New research published today in the peer-reviewed scientific journal Ocean Sciences indicates that sea levels are rising faster than even the gloomiest forecasts predicted. Well, this affects two-fifths of the Earth's population who are living near coastlines. And joining us today from Vienna to discuss is an editor for Bloomberg News covering global renewable energy, Jonathan Tyrone. Hey, Jonathan, so great to have you on the show. Um, look, the research here is suggesting that countries are going to have to rein in their greenhouse gases even more than expected. Uh, how much more are they referring to? Help put this into context for our viewers. Yeah, so the new research... Um says that the curve that the International Panel on Climate Change, so this is the standard uh, scientific um, uh, international panel that comes out every five or six years and publishes um, you know, the cutting edge science on forecast of climate change. Basically, they're saying that 200 gigatons equivalent of carbon dioxide will have to be cut if we want to stay within that framework. And to give you an idea of what 200 gigatons means, all of the Earth's economies um, emit about 43 gigaton last year. Whoa. So we're talking about five years equivalent of all the emissions that the global economy uh, produces. That's the additional cut um, reduction in emissions that we would need to institute uh, to remain within the boundaries that have been defined. Is, is, that, um, real, is that realistic, Jonathan? Well, um, you know, is it realistic? Is um, it a realistic goal? It, it, that, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of beyond uh, the scope of the uh, research that was published today. That's obviously a political and a policy decision, uh, you know, how uh, much value do we put on um, property uh, and life along the coastlines? Um, how much uh, um, uh, emissions are already baked in yeah. to the uh, economy that we have? Um, how fast can we transition out of this one? Can technologies uh, like carbon capture, uh, maybe fusion in mid-century, uh, save us. Um, you know, there's a lot um, of moving pieces there, uh, but uh, obviously, the decision and the message that we've accepted is that we want to try to mitigate um, this kind of uh, disruption. You know, I, I there's this there's this line in, in in your piece: insured property worth trillions of dollars could face even greater danger from floods, superstorms, and and tidal surges. Uh, paint a picture for us about what this could look like in a few years. I mean, are, are we talking parts of Miami underwater, parts of, of, of Manhattan underwater? Well, the occasional uh, Bloomberg columnist and uh, esteemed science fiction writer Kim Stanley Robinson certainly uh, projects that kind of scenario. Um, it's really just a matter of uh, you know, uh, thermodynamics. Uh, the warmer that the oceans uh, become, the more energy they absorb. And when that energy bumps up against densely populated areas on coastlines, uh, havoc ensues yeah. occasionally and more frequently. And so, um, you know, this is a question. Uh, you know, Venice is right down the road from us in Vienna, and that's underwater. There's still a vibrant tourist scene in Venice. And so if, you know, Venice was also one of the birthplaces of uh, banking. So um, I guess if you have the financial resources uh, and uh, taste for nostalgia, uh, then uh, <laughs> highly populated coastal uh, zones will continue to be populated. Uh, you know, the question is what happens to uh, places that don't have those financial resources and, um, you know, uh, are forced to evacuate. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm I'm having a hard time imagining uh, taking a gondola to and from work here uh, in Manhattan. Bloomberg's <laughs> Jonathan Tyrone in Vienna. Jo uh, Jonathan, thanks so much for.